So we are going to learn the use of Wilcoxon signed rank test. See, these are some of the characteristics of this test. It is a non-parametric test. This test is an alternative to pair T test or dependent T test. It is mainly applied when data do not occur in normal distribution pattern. And in this test, the individual cases will always be in pairs. Now in this table, a particular example is given and we shall try to apply this Wilcoxon signed rank test in this example. Hemoglobin content, see in the first column, hemoglobin content in 11 individuals, these individuals are A, B, C, D up to K, C, 11 persons have randomly been selected from a population and uh, their hemoglobin content was measured. Values of their hemoglobin content measured in the month of January, that is before treatment, is given in this middle column. And uh, then these individuals were fed on iron-rich diet and then that becomes the after-treatment condition. And then all these persons were then measured for their hemoglobin content in the month of December. So January is one period and then December is another period when after treatment their hemoglobin content was taken. Now values are given here like 9.9 .9 gram per deciliter and after treatment uh, the hemoglobin content is shown here that is 12.3 gram per deciliter. So this is individual A who was actually observed twice. Then individual B, that fellow was observed twice, first in the month of January and then in the month of December. So here in the month of January, his or her hemoglobin content was 11 gram per deciliter and then in the uh, month of December, uh, this became 10.6 gram per deciliter. So this way, data is given here. Now our purpose will be to see that whether the treatment that is uh, iron rich diet treatment that has affected the hemoglobin content or not. So our null hypothesis see in this uh, table in the lower side EHO means null hypothesis that is before and after treatment are equal. We hypothesize that there is no difference in the hemoglobin content of the uh, two months that is January and December. Now the alternate hypothesis will be that before and after treatment are not equal. It means we consider that there uh, becomes significant difference because of treatment. Now total 11 pairs have been considered so n is equal to 11 and we are going to test this hypothesis at 5% level so alpha is equal to 0 0.05. Now let us see the steps which are involved in analyzing this data. As I just said, these are 11 persons which is shown in column 1. In column 2, before uh, hemoglobin cases are mentioned, then hemoglobin content after treatment that is given here. Now in the fourth column, we are going to find out the difference. That is difference between the before and after. So we are simply going to subtract the after values from the uh, before values. That is 9.9 .9 minus 12.3. So this comes minus 2.4. Then 11 minus 10.6, it will come plus 0 0.4. Then 12.5 minus 14, it will come minus 1.5. So this way, we shall find out the difference between these two values. And we have to put the minus and plus sign also. So here simply I have put minus sign. Now then we write absolute difference. Absolute difference means we are not going to consider this sign plus or minus sign. We have simply changed these values into absolute values. So minus 2.4, it is 2.4. And asterisk I have put just to denote that these values were obtained in minus. 
After converting these difference values into absolute difference, we are going to rank the absolute difference values. We are simply going to rank the values. So what we are observing that 0 0.3 is the lowest value. So this will be assigned rank 1. Then the next value is 0 0.4 and this is being given rank 2. The next value is 0 0.7 and this is being given rank 3. Then 0 0.9 it is being ranked as 4. This way we have ranked all these 11 cases and the ranks also range from 1 to 1 to 11. Luckily none of the values are similar and if we find the difference 0 suppose suppose there is any situation in which you get the difference value 0 then that case will not be considered. So instead of n which is uh, 11 here that will become 10. So in this case we have assigned ranks to these values. Now in the next step what we are going to do we have to see that which of the ranks are uh, minus and which of the ranks are plus. So we find that this rank is minus means minus 10. So now we are putting signed ranks. So it is in minus. Then here this rank is in minus. Then this one is in minus. Then this uh, you know this one is also you know this should be actually minus unfortunately this minus value is left over here so this will be minus 3 uh, so we have actually put the signed rank and then in the next step we shall find out the total of minus signed ranks it means we will add up all those values which are denoted by sign uh, minus signed ranks so it is minus 10 plus minus 6 that will be uh, minus 16 uh, plus uh, minus 5 it will be minus 21 so likewise uh, this minus 3 will be added to that minus 1 will be added to that when we will add all these minus signed values it will come 32 and the plus uh, signed ranks these values are 34 in number that is 2 plus 9 plus 4 uh, plus 8 plus 11 this total will come 34 so total of minus signed ranks that has come 32 and total of plus signed ranks it has come 34 now we need uh, Wilcoxon value so this W uh, is stat or W statistics that will be the lower value so here uh, 32 is lower so W is stat this value is 32 because we have to consider uh, the lower value and n is equal to 11. After knowing this much, we will need the Wilcoxon table. So this is the table and at 5% level, that is at 0 0.05 level, the values are given here and we have to see the n, n number of cases. These are 11. So at 11, the Wilcoxon critical value is 10. So this is critical value. Now what we observe that W statistic is 32, number of cases n is equal to 11 and W critical is 10 which we have just seen from the table. So here we are accepting the hypothesis. Null hypothesis is accepted. Why? Because the W statistic value is more than the critical value. See, uh, you might have uh, gone through other tests like chi-square test or student t-test or uh, analysis of variance. In those cases, the calculated value, the calculated value, if that is less than critical value, then we accept the hypothesis. But here the situation is just opposite. Here if the calculated value or if the Wilcoxon value is more than the table value or critical value only then we accept the hypothesis so here in this case the w statistics 32 is more than critical so we accept the null hypothesis 
and uh, we can say that probability is more than 0.05 and in the present case there is no difference in the hemoglobin content at before and after treatment. So this is our final inference that the uh, there is no difference that exists between the before hemoglobin content and uh, the hemoglobin content which is observed after the treatment. So this is the way one can uh, apply the different steps to uh, reach a specific inference.